Fruit explosions are a main staple in product animations since forever. So we are going to make one as well, but this time we are going to make it in Geometry Nodes. So let's get started straight away. I've got our scene right here and the first thing we should do is fix up our Kiwi because those two parts are not connected. I hope you are not distracted by the sound in the background. They are working on the road right behind me, but I'm going to film this anyway. So I will select this part, then I will select this part, press Ctrl J, and now you will have all these hairs coming through the Kiwi itself. So what we should do is go into edit mode, select these four edges, Ctrl plus plus plus, go into the vertex groups, and select this, click on remove. And now as you can see, there are no hairs coming through our Kiwi anymore. Reason for it is because we changed this in the particle system by going to vertex groups and adding this group to the density. So we have our strawberry, we have our Kiwi, and we can now delete this by the way, and the Kiwi will probably be located somewhere else. It's right over here. So I'm going to place it over there. Now one very important part right now is to go into the particle system, go down to children and set the display amount to one or zero depending on what you want. This will remove the hair so we can work with it more efficiently in the Geometry Nose Editor. So we've got our blender right here and there is our scene. And we probably should make this a bit bigger because it's not enough to have a giant fruit explosion in the background. So I'm going to simply scale this up, bring this down, G and Z. And now this should give us enough space to work with and make this look good. So right here we have our blender and I'm going to press Shift A, Mesh and add an icosphere. So now we've got an icosphere, I'm going to place it backwards just a little bit and go over here, open up a new tab, Geometry Node Editor right over here, press on N to remove this bar, click on New and that will create our Geometry Node input and output. Now the idea of this is to scale the icosphere outwards, so we have the fruit going outwards and then we want to randomize all the motions that the fruit makes. So the way we are going to do it is simply by bringing this over to the side. I will bring in a distribute points on faces node right over here. Add an instance on points as well. I'm going to select my kiwi and I'm going to select my strawberry as well. And let's make sure that this is all connected. So let's select everything, including the seeds. Convert to mesh, control J. And now this strawberry is connected together as well. Let's select the kiwi, press on M and make a new collection. Let's call it fruit. So we've got our icosphere with the geometry nodes set up. Now drag this collection, the fruit collection, into this part right over there. Plug the instance into the instance and we should already be able to see something going on. And there are some weird kiwis stacked upon each other and the reason for this is that we should separate the children, reset the children and also pick an instance. So in that case we do not have multiple instances on the same point. Now this makes sure that we have all of these objects on our icosphere which is not that big right now. So I'm going to bring in a transform geometry node and plug it right over here. And then the scale, we can bring it down or upwards. And this is basically going to drive the animation. So let's go over to this mode for now, just to make it a bit more visible. As you can see, there are quite a lot of strawberries and kiwis going on there. So I'm going to set the density to one for now, maybe even 0.5. So we have a bit more speed to work with and we have to randomize the scale. So let's go over here, random value, plug it in here, value in the scale. And now we can determine the scale of our strawberries and kiwis like so. It should have a minimum value because we do not want any very little kiwis, as that would be weird. So I'm going to increase this and just make sure it's a bit more randomized like so. Probably make it a bit smaller so they do not touch. You could choose to go to the Poisson disc and make sure they don't touch at all. But later on in the animation this might hurt us, so I'm not going to do it for now. I might switch it in the future. But for now I will go over to the collection, random value, and now we need to randomize our rotation. So I'm going to bring this upwards. I'm going to bring in an align Euler to vector node and drag this rotation from the distribute points on faces, rotation into the rotation of the align Euler to vector, then drag this into the rotation as well. And now everything is going to be rotated ever so slightly on a weird axis. But as you can see, if we play around with these values, it's starting to move around. And this is what we are going to be using uh, in order to have a slight animation going like this. And it's not going to be hard. I'm going to press Shift A, scene time, bring it right over here. Then I will add a math note like this. Set it to multiply and plug the seconds into the second slot of the multiply. And as you can see, we have some random rotation going on for our fruits. Now this might be a bit too much. So what we can also do is duplicate this multiply, bring it right over there. And now you can slow it down depending on this value. So you can also make it very fast if you'd like. But I'm not going to do that. I'm simply going to set it to 0.5 for now. And I think this will work out fine. Now there might be some random rotation going on with these fruits. And the way to separate that is actually by bringing in a separate 
XYZ node, bring it right over there, Z into the value of the multiply, and now it will only rotate on that axis, which is already starting to look a bit better. And we can also play around a bit with these values in order to have something a bit more randomized. And of course, we can randomize this as well. So if we take a random value once again, set it to factor, plug it into the factor right over here, take a scene time and plug the seconds into the max. And right now everything will be a bit more randomized from the start. So this is what it looks like, not bad. So we've basically got a whole lot of our animation going for us. Now I'm going over to the transform geometry and what I want to do is basically scale this up and I don't like selecting all of these together. I think it's a bit of a hassle. And as you can see, they are popping into existence and the reason for that is the distribute points on faces node. And that's just a little mistake I made. So we only have to delete the distribute points on faces right over there and make sure it's removed from this line. And now everything will work out fine because we already set this up and this still works. So that is no problem. We are still going to use this. We're simply not going to use the distribute points on faces. So if we scale this up, we see that our fruits are moving out of the normals of the icosphere, which is very good, but it's very uniform and linear. So this will not make for a great animation. In order to fix that, we are going right over here and add a set position node, plug it right in here, and let's bring in a noise texture. Let's plug this into a factor math node in the subtract. So right over there, bring it in the offset and set this to 0.5. And now if we increase the skill or decrease the skill of this, we can drive some animation of this. So take the subtract, set this to multiply, and now you can see that we actually get some random movement right over there. And we want to drive this, so let's go ahead and make a scene time once again, plug the seconds into the factor, and now they are moving out of each other ever so slightly, which gives it a bit better result if you ask me. So I'm going to make a math note once again to control this as well. So we can go over here to multiply and increase the power of this if we want it to be stronger. Now this is way too strong obviously, but we can play around with the values in order to get what we like. First thing I'm going to do is heading over into the icosphere and making sure that it's not visible at all. I'm going to take this G and X and bring it out of the frame and make sure we have a camera. So shift A, bring in a camera right over here camera. Let's have a look at this. Well, it's still square from the previous tutorial, so I'm just going to set it to 1920 by 1080. Sorry, I have to interrupt, but if you enjoyed this free course thus far and want more awesome content delivered on your digital doorstep, click on subscribe. Let's go over to the composition guides to see if it's in the middle, and I'm going to make this 100 frames. So we'll go over here, go into this window, and press I. And now we have a keyframe on our camera. Then I'm going over here, zooming in, maybe bring it a bit down, rotate it on the G, on the RZZ, like so. And maybe we can begin somewhere around this button, press on I, and now the camera will move out like this, and we get a pretty cool looking animation already, but it's not done yet. As you may know from the previous free course, we can change some things in the graph editor. So I'm right here in the graph editor, and I will open this up, and if I reason on what axis we are, we can actually see it, it's on the Y axis, and I want this to move very fast in the beginning, and then I want it to be slower as it comes to a halt. So we'll take this line of the Y location, make sure it's unlocked, bring it down. And if you don't know what I'm doing right now, I highly recommend watching the other free course first so you have some basics in animation. And right here, we can see it pulling itself outwards and then slowly moving backwards to finish it off. I'm going into the Y Euler rotation and I will open this up, take this, and I will take this line as well because I want the rotation to be fast in the beginning and then slow down as we proceed. So let's go over here, bring this down, and this should be a whole lot faster in my opinion like so and actually i want it to be done somewhere over there so i'm going to take this g and x and have it be very fast like so and this is starting to look pretty good we can see it's moving a bit upwards as it goes and i want that to be the same overall so i'm going to select the z location open this up take this bring this upwards and have it be quick as well and now it's already centered as it's slowing down something like this. So now that is the basis of our animation. By the way, my camera is set to 50 millimeters and maybe we actually want to use 80. And it will be a bit more zoomed in, which is no problem in this case. And I think that the final keyframe should be moved a bit more backwards. So I'm going to take the Y location right over there, take it and bring it down. 
somewhere over here. And now we've changed the animation for the camera to move even further backwards because we are now using 80 millimeters. I'm going to take this, make sure it's even faster, like so. I think the Y rotation can be a bit faster. So I'm going to the Y rotation, take this, make sure it's a bit faster. All right, so we've already reached the end of the animation right here. So maybe we can make this 72 seconds and I think five seconds is a bit long anyways. So now what we need to do is go over to the timeline, go to the icosphere right here, bring it back. And what I want to see is have it scale up and down like this. And we, could do it, we can do it like this if we want, but we're actually going to do it in the transform geometry right over there. So go to frame zero, change this to one, click on I, and now we have a keyframe, but you cannot see it. And the reason for it is that you have to click on this node in order to see the keyframes for it. Now, we can already see through the mesh that our fruit is neatly aligned behind the blender, ready to explode. We are going to have it explode when it becomes visible. Somewhere over here. First, I will go and make this 72 frames. Bring it outwards, something like this. Press I. So if you're having trouble with these animations and it looks a bit janky, go into the noise texture that we made in the geometry node setups right over here. Change the scale to 0.1, detail to 15. You can also set it to one, doesn't really matter for in this case. And decrease the roughness to zero. And now everything will look fine. So let's see what this looks like without the noise texture. You can take it out. And now it's all uniformly going into the direction of the icosphere itself, which is not what we want. So that's why we created this part. And now it's a bit more randomized and it's moving outward. We have a cool looking explosion, but we're definitely not done yet. So I'm going to select this transform geometry. And first, let's have a look in our render mode. Is this the size we want our fruits to be? Are there enough fruits? So if you want more fruits, we can also add a subdivide mesh or subdivision surface modifier if you'd like. So I'm going to add a subdivision surface right over here, plug it in, and now increase the edge crease. But as you can see, once we do this, it kind of looks a bit less randomized. And the way to fix that would be to go over here to our group input and add another set position node right over here. And then we can add a random value, set it to factor, plug it into the offset. And now we have to play around with these values in order to get to something that we like. So let's bring it over there, let's bring it over here. Maybe make it a bit less extreme. And now it will look a bit more randomized. So this is what it looks like right now. So we can fix the animation. So let's go over to the transform geometry. And now we've got our keyframes here. Go to the graph editor, and then we will see geometry nodes, open it up, and we get some values. So I will select everything because we changed the entire scale. Select it all. And once again, we want it to be fast in the beginning and then slow down. Maybe it would be nice to move this to the side and have it start a little bit later. So now for the lighting, let's go over to the HDRI. Let's turn the sky strength to 0.1. And now we have some light, but it's definitely not a lot. Pretty dark, but we can make a area lamp. So I'm going to bring an area lamp right over there. Shift A, light, area lamp. Scale it up a bit, increase the power. Let's see what we're doing. R, Y, 90. Let's move it over to this side. And I only want this to be operating on this blender. So I will go to the area lamp right here. Click on this little button, go to light linking new. So now we've got our light linking right over here and I'm going to select the entire blender, which is basically this entire part. So I'm going to select all of this, press M, call it blender, go to the area lamp and drag this collection in the light linking area. And now this light will only work on this blender, which is what we want. And now I will bring in a gobo, which is what I'm going to use. You do not have to use this, but it does add a little bit to the entire render. I will bring in abstract one from the ultimate gobo pack. Now we'll bring it upwards, increase the strength of this by a bunch because we scaled the scene up to quite a fair bit. Increase the spot size, increase the radius to make it just a little bit softer and have it located at our wall in the background. And this gives us some interesting looking results. I will bring in a black body as well, set it to 6000. You can make this a bit softer just for some background variation. Select our camera, viewport display, passepartout. This is what it looks like right now. I think this area lamp could be a bit stronger and we can also bring back some of that HDRI. So let's click on the camera again, go to depth of field, select the blender with the picker tool and decrease the f-stop until some of the fruits 
are still visible and some in the back are less visible. So now you might think, mm, the fruit maybe is not entirely what I want it to be. And we can change that, of course. And we might even change the orientation of this, bring it closer to the blender and then play around with our depth of field, something like this. And what we could do is maybe make another area lamp on the top. It's very strong for now, so we see what we're doing. And then have only the icosphere be operating in it by using the light linking again dragging our icosphere in the light linking and now it will only work on the fruit as you can see if we click this button it will be removed from the fruit and uh, we can choose to make our fruit a bit brighter if we would like to do that but never have light come from the bottom always from the top why well because the sun usually shines from the top and our eyes are more accustomed from light coming from the top usually when you're at home a light is also on the top things like that so we are more accustomed to that so something like this looks pretty good we can also add a volumetric so let's scale this up quite a bit go to the shader editor new principled volume volume in the volume decrease this by a whole lot see what it looks like it's way too much 0 0.005 it upwards and now let's see what it does for us so let's turn it off and on and it just adds a little bit of atmosphere which i like so I'm going over here and I'm going to select motion blur, make sure that's turned on. And now you can click on render and render the entire animation. And you can play around with the settings, of course. This is why we did it in Geometry Node, so don't follow exactly what I did. You can also play around with it, you can customize it. You can also use a different shape, so you don't have to use an icosphere. So you can play around with this some more. That's the entire reason we use Geometry Node instead of particle systems, where you're kind of dependent on your bake. I'm going to tweak some settings as well before I render this out, but I gave you the general outline of how to use this technique instead of a particle system. And now you can play around, customize it to your liking, and make sure it looks good. I've given you all the tips that you need. We've got our cool looking backlight we've got a fruit explosion we've got a camera animation that we all did in blender just now so i'm doubting right now whether i should make the fruits very big which would make the blender seem a bit small or whether i should use a lot of fruits but i will keep you updated and you've probably seen it in the final version so i will see you in the next video that's it for the fruit explosion this one was pretty simple but in the future we are going to do some tough geometry node setups and i'm going to try my best to explain it as best as possible so you can use it in future projects as well i actually want to project the knowledge in into your minds. Check out my Gumroad to get all the assets from this course or the Ultimate Gobo Pack. Subscribe and I'll see you in this video next.